No rest for the wicked. Yes, the Oilers are going back to the phones to work a deal for a couple new pieces for the team, one of which could be Dante Fabro of the Nashville Predators. All that and more today on today's episode of Oiler Digest. But before I get into that, all the news, all the rumors, all the breakdowns, make sure to subscribe here to the channel as we are almost oh so close to 1,700 subscribers. I'd like to thank each and every one of you for joining us along the ride here, and it's just about to get better. Now, let's get right into things here with familiar patterns. Yes, the player you saw in the intro there was Dante Fabro, and he was linked to to the Edmonton Oilers. Of course, the Oilers, ever since losing Philip Broberg in Dylan Holloway, they've gone to uh, other resources to reinforce their team, one of which could be a trade, according to Frank Saravalli. He says the Oilers are in a different position because of what they built and because of the advance to the Stanley Cup final that players want to play there. So the Oilers have options and they're pursuing those options. But I've got to tell you, there are other things that Edmonton is looking at, including a potential trade that could shake things up a little more than the PTO route. A trade that wouldn't have to wait until training camp. I think there are seven different scenarios that Stan Bowman and his staff are probably looking at. It might be just as simple as a one-year league minimum contract. It might be a PTO, but I think they're willing to consider other options now that they have flexibility to do something. And of course, the uh, the NHL offseason has looked like NHL trade deadline week with trade rumors swirling like a summer tornado. One of the most intriguing rumors involves the Edmonton Oilers in the Nashville Predators with Evander Kane expected to land on long-term injured reserve or LTIR. The Oilers suddenly have some cap flexibility and new GM Stan Bowman seems ready to make a splash. Aside from the dry subtle contract extensions, Bowman is trying to make this team better uh, in, in one of his first big moves as GM. In his bold move, the Oilers are targeting the Nashville Predators duo in, LT in an LTIR shuffle there. Uh, you can see the names there. Nashville's Dante Fabro and Philip Tomasino have been popular names in the rumor mill all summer. Like I said, the Oilers recently, you know, uh, giving uh, Philip Broberg and Dylan Holloway, it wasn't so much a trade there as it says in the article, to St. Louis, are in the market for reinforcements. And those are two interesting names there for the Predators, of course. The Predators sort of in limbo between trying to contend and then, you know, trying to get better, uh, stacking up the prospects as they just recently traded Yaroslav Askarov to the San Jose Sharks there because, you know, Soros, eight years, and then Wedgwood. There is a whole uh, crease controversy without their need to ever having uh, be one. But nonetheless, the speculated deal would see Dante Fabro and Tomasino heading to Edmonton in exchange for prospect Max Warner, a right, uh, right side defenseman there who was in Bakersfield all of last season and had a tremendous rookie AHL season uh, followed up with a 2025 second round pick originally belonging to St. Louis that St. Louis gave to Edmonton um, in exchange for those two players I do believe the second was to for Philip Roberg in a 2026 third round pick Acquiring Fabro and Tomasino would address some key needs for the Oilers. Fabro, a reliable right shot defenseman, would add depth and stability to the blue line. You could slot him beside a guy like Darnell Nurse. Of course, Fabro in Nashville, he has some familiarity playing with some big names. Uh, he played next to Matisse Ekholm and Roman Yossi. Tomasino, a promising young forward with offensive upside, could provide a much-needed scoring punch to the Oilers' middle six. Now, let's take a look at Dante Fabro here from Jay Fresh, you know, the analytics king of hockey, uh, with a tongue-in-cheek comment here regarding Dante Fabro. He said, not really sure why so many Oilers fans are asking me to post Dante Fabro's card. But okay, pretty efficient player, not physical, low risk in the defensive zone, and doesn't turn the puck over in transition. And that's exactly what the Oilers need next to a guy like Darnell Nurse. They need someone who can, you know, bring stability to that pairing. And you see 60% wins above replacement there. Pretty reliable player there. You can see he has some PK time in Nashville. And there's really not much more uh, to say about him uh, other than that. I mean... Is he a fit with Edmonton? Yes, you can see there the impact on the even strength goal share uh, compared to the impact on the even strength expected goal share. You can see there that, you know, Fabro had his fair share of chances or assisting on chances, but the National Predators just could not finish there. And you can see there his zone exit score at 90% is phenomenal. The Oilers, you know, in recent years have had trouble with their defenseman breaking out of the zone, but Dante Fabro. Uh, 90%, that's exactly what the Oilers need. 
and you can see there when it comes to you know the defensive pairings Fabro is not listed there you can see there are uh, familiar names uh, Brady Shea, Roman Yossi, Jeremy Lozon, Alexander Carrier, Spencer Stastny who the uh, Predators are very high on and Luke Shen of course when it came to Carrier against Fabro Predators management especially Barry Trotz they seem to have favored uh, a guy like Carrier more than Fabro and then going on to Philip Tomasino here, you can see there, um, not not a very uh, impactful player with the Predators, only played half the season as he bounced up and down between uh, Milwaukee and Nashville. You can see there's 7 goals, 13 assists, 20 points in 41 games. Uh, but, you know, it's just uh, all about a fresh start for Tomasino, and I think that's exactly uh, what the Oilers could give him in their in their bottom six. Of course, you know, their bottom six uh, is not exactly the youngest, having, you know, gotten rid of Dylan Holloway but Tomasino I wouldn't say he's a Holloway replacement but he makes it much younger there you can see that in his first pro season with the Chicago Wolves uh, more than a point per game there showed promise played in the World Juniors that year 14 Canada came up to the Nashville Predators again had a very respectable rookie season but ever since that just kind of bounced up and down between uh, Nashville and Milwaukee and you can see there his qualifying offer on the right there. He still has not accepted that from the Nashville Predators. And there's lots of, you know, Predator media, Predator fans asking if he even wants to be there. You know, if he doesn't have like a solidified role, then he might be on his way out. And again, a fresh start for Thomas, you know, into that Oilers bottom six would be phenomenal. And you can see there the projected lineup there for the Predators. Again, not listed. Uh, I do believe the Predators are trying to... Uh, on, you see there that right side on the fourth line, you saw Parson in. I do believe they value Parson in a little, uh, little higher than Philip Tomasino. Now, when it comes to the Oilers side of things, uh, Max Warner, uh, defensive prospect. They're trying to, you know, bulk up their prospect pool uh, significantly, you know, acquiring uh, a guy like uh, Matthew Savoy or uh, Roby Yarventi from the Ottawa Senators. They're trying to get younger. So, uh, Warner would be, you know, uh, missed. I mean, he was, you know, highly regarded with the Bakersfield Condors in his rookie season. From Eric Friesen here, he said Max Warner is big, physical, mean, and solid defensively. He led the Condors in plus-minus rating as a rookie defenseman last season. He will be a better version of Vincent DeHarnay. And Vincent DeHarnay, in his time with the Oilers, his very limited time with the Oilers, two seasons uh, to be exact, uh, very divided amongst Oilers fans. Some thought he was, you know, uh, a little slow behind the play. Others thought he was exactly what the Oilers needed. But for Max Warner to be a better version of Vincent DeHarnay, that would be something they would sorely miss. But again, when it comes to a win now, um, it, it, it's a win now situation for the Oilers. You know, getting someone that's already NHL ready um, uh, compared to someone that, you know, you might have to wait two, maybe even three seasons for him to fully develop into the player that they say would be a better version of Vincent DeHarnay. As you can see there on the right side defense, he is uh, second last on the depth chart there below guys like Philip Kemp, who is a little more NHL ready than Warner, uh, Josh Brown, Stetcher, Emerson, and of course Bouchard. So uh, apples and oranges here. I mean, you're losing um, a stud prospect in Max Warner, but you're also gaining one in Dante Fabro, who could be the missing piece for the Edmonton Oilers. Let me know down in the comments uh, what you think about this this speculated rumor. Uh, would Fabro be a good fit for the Oilers in your eyes? Would you? Would you say for them to wait until the trade deadline to see if there's anything better and just stick with guys like Stetcher and Emerson? Let me know down in the comments. Have yourselves a fantastic day. I'm Matt.